up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what's good, what's up, people, it's me, I'm L2070, no lie out. Thundercats are on the move, Thundercats are loose, honey. He's about the business of dipping spoons into sugar bowls. Anyway, real girls do real things. So as to make it easier for insertion, maybe? No means no, and yes means no. What up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what's good, people? What's up, what's up, what's up? It is me, L Teddy27, and I am back for yet another review. This, ladies and gentlemen, will be our review for The Real Housewives of Potomac. It is season seven. It is episode 20. It is the reunion part three. I'm so glad it's over. Thank you, sweet seven pound, three ounce baby Jesus. Because uh, I, I, I don't know that I have the bandwidth to do next season, y'all. I'm, I'm just being honest. These these ladies have exhausted me. They have taken everything out of me. I can't, I'm supposed to be doing, right after this, my review of the Queens of R&B. I might not get it out to y'all till tomorrow. Because literally, I don't have the energy, strength, bandwidth, all of that. I don't have the energy. So, we start off with Jacqueline and Mia. They still going at it. To surmise this whole interaction, Mia is a goddamn liar. Everything she utters out of her mouth is a lie. There is no amount of truth at this point that I can believe leaves her lips. Like, there is literally nothing that she can say that I'll be like, oh yeah, I believe that. Nothing. Nothing. It, it, it was a Jacqueline started by saying Mia was lying about her being in foreclosure. Something about Mia sent the group text in that her house was in for, that um, Jacqueline's house was in foreclosure and that she was on food stamps. The lie detector term, determined that was a lie. Jacqueline says um, uh, Mia been telling everybody that she was the CEO. The lie detector te test determined that was a lie. Gordon was and not her. Um, uh, Mia had said that she had spent Mother's Day with Jacqueline's mom and and um, and Jacqueline didn't. The lie detector t test determined that was a lie. Mia pulled out receipts. Um, I'm sorry, Jacqueline pulled out receipts that Mia had never spent time, had not spent any time with her mom on Mother's Day. <sighs> Jacqueline um, uh, was asked whether or not she had sex with Gordon. She said no. Uh, she said that was something that the ladies came up with and um, proliferated on their own. Um, Mia basically offhandedly admitted that she just threw out there that Jacqueline was sleeping with married men with no evidence, just basically just grasping at straws at that point. Um, Mia says that when Jacqueline um, said that she needs some more, uh, maybe she needs some more dick that... Jacqueline was basically taking a shot at Gordon um, at Gordon Gartrell and his um, cancer, a prostate cancer. That was a stretch, Mia. Like, nobody felt, even with you telling us that Gordon suffered and had prostate cancer, nobody here is believing that Jacqueline saying that you need more dick in your life was her taking a shot at Gordon and his prostate cancer. But if you want to, I mean, you're a liar at this point. The whole situation about Jacqueline getting the money for her Porsche from um or the down payment or whatever part of the money from a push from um gordon gartrell the lie detector test determined that was a lie it was made up by mia for a storyline jacqueline went along with it and and um agreed to lie about it on camera but jacqueline pulled out the receipts showing that no parts of the amount of money that she paid for her porsche came from gordon gartrell or mia so at this point you know, Mia had this bedazzled box or whatever. And, oh yeah, I got a lot of papers in here. Basically, those was probably blank sheets of papers. Because she didn't, Mia does not give me that she's someone that would have withheld real receipts had she had them. She's always looking for a moment. She's always looking for a reason to be on camera and to be that girl on camera. Baby, if mama had something, she would have pulled it out. Oh, well, there's a lot of stuff here. There was nothing in the bedazzled box. Girl, just like it ain't nothing in her head. Just a mess. 
everything Jacqueline left the stage at that point. We didn't have no reason to have our own stage no more because we learned that everything was a lie. Everything is a lie. Moving on. I told you I don't even have the, the energy or bandwidth to go in on these ladies like I probably should or would during a, reg during a regular review. You know, it takes some conjuring up of energy to be L Teddy 27 and give enough about whatever I'm watching, to read the people, to drag them, to dishrag them, to have comedic timing, to do all of the things that go into this channel. And a bitch just came at this point. Hashtag ABC, a bitch came. I just don't have the energy for these um, for these women no more. I don't, I don't have the strength to give to these ladies. I can't do it. I won't do it. No ma'am, no God. Anyway, um, Sharice joins the um, cast on stage at that point. Karen says, they started to talk about Karen Mama Funeral. Karen said, I'm not here to talk about my mama funeral. I'm not going to talk about my mama funeral. Don't ask me to talk about my mama funeral. Sharice says, all of this back and forth Karen done had, baby, your math ain't right. Because at the time of your mom's funeral, we were not adversarial. We were not enemies at that point. We were cool with each other at the time of your mom's funeral. So there would have been no reason for you to have any amount of smoke for me going to your mom's funeral. And it makes sense for me to be at your mom's funeral and me and you are good. Are, are good. <sighs> Andy says, y'all can um, lay the rumor this away that Bravo is the one who asked Sharice to come on the show. Not the other way around. I already know Tracy Chappelle is about to be in my comment section. Shout out to uh, a member of the Mod Squad and one of my members, Tracy Chappelle, who doesn't like the big beach, the beluga whale that is Sharice Jackson Jordan. So I'm sure as we speak, she is feverishly typing into the comment section. You're either looking at one of her comments right now. Just go down into the comment section. You'll see Tracy. She's going to say something about Sharice. She'll call her Tim Bay in a wig. Or she ain't watched this review yet. And if you come back in a little bit, her comments will be there. Trust and believe. Anyway, I want you to put a like on this video or a dislike on this video based on the level of reading that Tracy Chappelle has on, on Sharice. If she have a good read of Sharice in the comment section, give a thumbs up to the video. You can give a thumbs up to her comment but give a thumbs up to the video if she don't got no good read you can give a dislike to the video i it won't it won't bother me i'll be okay with that shout out to Sh tracy love you boo anyway um karen says sharice was wrong for spreading the rumors about her having sex in the bathroom i will admit that probably was kind of wrong it probably was but at that point karen and sharice was in all all out war knock down drag out so it didn't even matter at that point. Karen got everything she was worth at that point. I mean, when we going at it, when we, you know, in the octagon, baby, it's every man, every woman, every non-binary for themselves. And however little I got to go, listen, you are never going to hear me. I'm not going to say never, but I can almost say never or rarely going to hear me say, oh, they just went too low. Baby, that's if that's where you decide to take it and decide to go, Baby, I can't tell you where to go because I know me. I'm going straight down to the ninth level of hell every time. Do not ask no questions. You come at my throat, you get ninth level of hell. So I understand. Anytime somebody needs to go down that road, go ahead. We'll get to more of that later. Anyway, um, Wendy says, uh, I'm sorry, no, Mia was asked about the rumor that she had on Karen Said, and, but Mia said she didn't really want to talk about it because it was a family member and she didn't want a family member involved with it. And then um, um, Karen says, well, give the number to the person name and number to Andy so I can sue them. Like, you just sound stupid at this point, Karen. Nobody's going to give you the name and number of their relative for you to actively litigate them. Let's just be clear. Whatever. Um, <laughs> just a mess. Wendy chimes in and says, I noticed that these ladies, they don't have no problems with rumors. They're all here for all of the rumors when it involves everybody else. But if it involves them, then there's a, oh, no, you can't bring that rumor to the show. Oh, no, you can't talk about that. Oh, that's not something you can say and have none of that smoke. 
when it's about somebody else. Matter of fact, they're the ones proliferating rumors. Just a minute, since Karen talks about a whole lot of rumors on the show, but magically nobody can mention any of her rumors. And it's the same for all of the ladies. We then get to the Robin package. I'm going to just be honest. I could have did without the Robin package. Matter of fact, I could have dealt without the whole extra however many minutes they had for Robin at after the end of the episode. It was just a mess. Giselle says she was bothered because she was not invited to Robin's wedding. I don't care, Giselle. Go somewhere, shrivel up, and die slowly. Robin says Juan signed a prenup. They get 50-50. There's no fidelity clause because she says she might want to get her box eaten, beat in, scissored, or however she chooses to have sex today with her box. Which also gives Juan the freedom to go and blow backs out up and down the Maryland Eastern Shore and in other places, you know, up and down the Eastern Seaboard. <sighs> if they do get divorced, it doesn't include ownership of the business. They just split their monies 50-50. I ain't care. I've told you, I, I fell asleep during this portion. I just really didn't care. I woke up, Robin was talking about the Coppin State University situation. She, she said, I ain't going to talk about what other people did. I could just tell you Juan is not guilty of the things they're accusing him doing. I ain't really care. Moving forward. Juan, Juan at this point, we'll get there later, can lie to Robin about everything imaginable and she will believe him. I don't feel bad for her. She, listen, at this point, Robin, do not ever complain to us about Juan cheating. Do not ever complain to us about anything you got going on, Robin. We don't care. We don't want to hear it. The husbands joined the um, cast on stage. That was after um, uh, Sharice, the big beached beluga whale, left. Eddie was cool, calm, and collected like always. Eddie was Eddie. Eddie always give off good vibes. I like Eddie. Gordon Gartrell started crying when he started talking about Mia and her health scare. Nobody cared. Cry on. Cry blood. Gordon says he hasn't had a sexual relationship with any of Mia's friends. However, Peter Thomas's girlfriend, ex-girlfriend, whatever she is, the Peter Thomas now, did slop his knob. Gave him sloppy toppy. I don't want to know Gordon Gartrell. I promise you. No sighted person wanted the horrible mental images of Peter Thomas's girlfriend going down on you. Please be clear. Moving on. Chris, we did get into the whole big thing. Um, Chris Giselle. We find out Chris did tell, according to Chris, he did ask Giselle to go to her room. Giselle, as we stated many times, believed that her glam squad was there. The glam squad was not there. There was a portion where they argued about the fact that Chris spoke to one of the members of her glam squad who said that he was leaving. And so Giselle was like, well, why did you agree to go to my room at that point? And Chris was like, well, don't you have other members of your glam squad? I don't think she got a glam squad to begin with because the bitch always look a fucking mess anyway. And nobody anywhere that has anything to do with cosmetology and beauty should ever lay claim on having anything to do with Giselle, her makeup, her hair, or her fashions. But if it's people out there claiming it, hey, go ahead, get it how you live, honey. It ain't even like she got that much money to be paying y'all like that. Shall a mess. A broke hoe who always comes out looking a fucking mess, and you want to claim that? Girl, just moving on. Uh, Chris was like, well, what about the other members of your glam squad? Uh, oh, the, what, what her name had left? Chris was like, how the fuck would I know that? Like, anyway, Chris did got heated at one point and started yelling and cussing at Giselle. There's going to be women across the Fruited Plains saying that Chris should be yelling at Giselle and all this, that, and the third, and that he was wrong for yelling at Giselle. I don't really, it didn't bother me, if I'm being honest. Baby, like he said, you done drug me under the um, bus for the last 10 months, you done screamed, rant, raved all over the place about how I had done all of these things to you. How I, you know, basically, if it was left to Giselle, the whole country would believe that Chris all out, R-A-P-E-D, her. Anyway, I mean, she would literally just let that linger out there as if Chris really R-A-P-E-D her. A mess. A mess. Candace got into it and um, got heated about it and started cussing at Giselle too. That's when she called her uh, a bitch ass gutter sniper stuff. And I was here for it. 
Chris and Giselle, like I said, they started arguing about the facts of was the door left open, was it not left open? Was the latch on, was the latch not on? Did Giselle have uh, her clothes on and did she have on a robe? Now, Chris said that Giselle had her dress on, but she had a robe on over her dress. Giselle probably just only heard robe and was like, that's not true. And Giselle, just because you say, that's not true, Chris, that's not true, doesn't mean that it's not true. You just saying that over and over and over doesn't mean that's not true. I'm not just going to believe you. See, Giselle is used to playing the damsel in distress. She's used to, oh, if I sound as if there's an alarm and I sound like the damsel in distress, people will automatically believe me. Don't forget, I'm a light-skinned woman who has light eyes. And if I say, that's not true, that's not true, and I put the right inflection and tone on my voice, Everybody's going to believe me because of the intonation in my voice and because I'm a light-skinned woman with light eyes. And if I say that's not true, that's not true. I ain't buying it, Giselle. I ain't buying it at all. They discuss, and I hate that they're calling this a DM because that gives Ashley the ammo that she needs. They keep calling, Chris did not DM fucking Ashley. Chris replied to a story and is negligent. For them to just keep saying that he DM Ashley. He did not DM Ashley. And Ashley took the bait and, you know, ran with it. Just a mess. We then had Chris, who made a great point. You said, because they, because then we got into this whole argument about Chris asking her, what did I do? And she could never say anything that he did. She just, it's just how, um, how I, you made me feel. I can't even go with that, Giselle, because at the moment that y'all walked into that room and there was no one there, if you were uncomfortable, you would have said, hey, Chris, let's take this somewhere else. I said this last week. But magically, it wasn't until after a few minutes, after everything, now you feel uncomfortable. And even if you did start to feel uncomfortable, you still can't point to a single thing he literally did to make you feel uncomfortable outside of coming into a room that you clearly had to invite him in. He doesn't have a key to your room. You had to literally invite him into the room, open the door, and let him in the room. So you wanted Chris to apologize to you for how you felt. That's not fair. But who am I? Chris brought up, well, you want to talk about uncomfortable feelings? How about the fact that season after season after season, you've gone out of your way to talk to and in vivid detail describe my penis to other women on this show? And with reckless abandon, not giving a shit about how I felt about it, not giving a shit about how my wife felt about it. You have done that time and time again. You've talked about my penis. You've refer referenced my penis. You've said things out loud to a whole group of people about my penis. And if that's not something that makes someone uncomfortable, then what the hell is? And you have no apologies for that. And I was with him. You ain't got no apology for talking about my dick over and over and over and over and over and over and over when I'm a married man and I haven't even told you, talked to you about my dick, mentioned anything to you about my dick, but you got my dick in your mouth. Figuratively, not literally. But you don't want no apologize. Uh, you don't want to apologize to me about that. But you want me to apologize to you because you felt uncomfortable and I didn't do anything. A mess. Candace completely at that point. Listen, Candace had to have enough. Candace was incensed. Chris, I think at one point during this conversation, Chris knew. I wonder if Andy gave him some eyes like, bruh. Because Chris, I think at one point knew, regardless as to how much I fuss and fight, I'm a white man on this stage, and there's a whole bunch of black women on this stage, and there are places that I can't go in 2023 with Giselle. Because it's never, no matter how wrong she is and right I am, it's never going to be seen that way. So Candace said, baby, you can't, but I sure the fuck can. And I shout out to Candace, because that's what a good wife do. Yeah, my husband... Can't go there with you, bitch. I can go there with you. And baby, she completed. She completely undressed Giselle. And it's gonna be people. It's gonna be. I ain't watched nobody review yet. I ain't seen no blogs. I ain't watched nothing. So I don't know how people feel. But I can imagine a lot of people are probably going to say that um, Candace was way over the top, way out of line. How dare she? Because at that moment, she introduced the colorism conversation, and she talked about Giselle's 
closeness to whiteness and how it's okay for her to make those allegations and be completely believed. But had she done that, she wouldn't have been completely um, believed. And she prob they probably wouldn't have even spent this much time on it, which I completely agree with. But she went there with Giselle. She cussed Giselle out. She completely um, undressed Giselle. The Mia's of the world and Ashley's of the world is basically like, they were like, wait, wait, stop. That's too much. You're giving her too much. You're, you're going below the belt. Let's be clear. Ashley Darby, some of the things that you have said to and about people on this show have been way below the belt. Way low as low as you can get. But you never get that, that same smoke. Some of the shit that Giselle then said to and about people has been way out of order. Y'all don't get that same smoke, which speaks to exactly because, oh, didn't we just finish talking about colorism? And you never fully unpacked that or addressed it. And it's on display yet again because y'all immediately, Ashley and Mia immediately chimed in and said, wait, no, that's too much. You can't give Giselle that much. You can't go. But baby, please be clear. Had Giselle been going off on Candace like that, it wouldn't have been all that fever. If Ashley would have been going off on Candace like that, it wouldn't have been all that fever at all. And Wendy, let me give you a piece of my mind, Wendy. Wendy, in that situation, you should have stayed there over there on the couch at night. We didn't need you to butt in, Wendy. Mm-mm. 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 Mm-mm, Wendy. Because the thing about it is, Wendy, at that point, see, Wendy, you can't go to Candace and tell Candace, oh, that's too low. Why? Because if Giselle's accusations that she made about um, Eddie last year had cost Eddie jobs down to his law firm, had cost him maybe, had been indirectly responsible for maybe him losing cases or losing the opportunity to have clients or maybe even losing his job and cost money coming into your household, you would be feeling the same way. And for you to tell Candace that she was out of order and she went too low when just last episode you were out there unleashing endless amounts of fuck this, fuck that, fuck you to Mia, it waxes hollow. Because when it was you and Mia, baby, you didn't care saying fuck you and this, that, and the third. And you were saying all of these horrible things that someone with four degrees teaching at Johns Hopkins University, most people aren't going to be used to people that are, you know, telling them over and over and over about their four degrees and all the places that they're working at. They're a political commentator going gutter butt, gutter snipe, F-bomb, lace tirade on Mia Thornton. You had no problems going there when it involved you, when you were assaulted. And I'm not saying that you were wrong. But what I am saying is you should have stayed out of this Wendy, because this is something that is that close to Candy. You are jeopardizing this woman's marriage, her family. That goes beyond the show. Just like you being assaulted goes beyond just a show. You should have stayed out of that because then you feed into um, everything that, like they said, they just talked about with the colorism. Colorism does it isn't just something that light-skinned people have against dark-skinned people. Sometimes it's so ingrained into the fabric of our culture and how we look at each other, how we see each other, how people were uh, reared and raised that even dark-skinned people fall victim to it as well because you were quickly to say, oh, you shouldn't go that far on Giselle. Why? Because it wasn't you. You were looking at it and from optics... There we go. It wasn't you personally going through it now, Wendy. Now it was someone else and you were viewing this. It was the optics and you thought it was too much, but it wasn't too much when it was Wendy. But yeah, I thought Candace was completely in her rights. When they asked her, do you apologize? No, she said, oh, I know it was inflammatory. And do you uh, regret saying that? Probably not. That's my energy. Baby, if I told you, you ain't shit, die slowly, I admit that at that time. Mm -hmm. Am I walking it back, taking it back? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I mean, exactly what I said. Just like the words that you said have harmed my family, harmed my loved one, harmed my husband, my spouse, and his ability perhaps to even earn 
his, you know, earn money as he used to. I hope that what I say I hurt you immensely. Sure do. Not walking it back. Mm -mm. That's just me though. I don't do that. I don't do that apologizing and stuff. And I'll be walking stuff back. Yeah, I said it. I meant it. Mm -hmm. That's that's where I was at that point. Even if I feel differently now, but you don't feel that I don't now. But back then I did, and I'm not apologizing for back then because that's how I felt, and I meant it. It was intentional. It was de deliberate. <sighs> but I, I'm sure it's gonna be a lot of people talking about, oh, you, sh how dare she go that low? There are some places you shouldn't go. At some point, you need to have some tact. At some point, you shouldn't go to. See, that's why she got beat up by Monique. You know that's gonna be the the people. That are so just, just, just two faced on this situation. That's why you got beat up by Monique, cause you don't know how to keep your mouth under control. Nobody's. I ain't gonna rehash this, child. I, child. Anyway, but um, I got a little bit for you, Candace. You can't see how I just said. If I say something to you, I'm not walking it back. I'm not apologizing. You can apologize if you want to. I'm not going through all that with you. I meant it. It was intentional. It was deliberate. But at the same time, Candace, if I say that to you, I'm not over here laughing, joking, kikiing with you in the next few minutes. Baby, my energy is, bitch, I'm cussing you out from A to Z. I'm going to end up doing one or two things from then on out. I'm going to either walk off stage and say, I ain't doing no more of this shit. Fuck that bitch. I hope the bitch dies slowly. That's why your body is rejecting you. And walk off stage. Or if I decide to stay on stage, because maybe that's a part of my contract and I want to get all my monies, I'm going to sit right there and be stone-faced. I'm not laughing and kiki with the rest of you girls. I have no energy for you. I have no energy for none of y'all. Nobody on that stage. The only person who I might entertain or... um be able to say something to on that stage, maybe Wendy. That's it. Me and Wendy might can have a key key. The rest of you bitches on this stage, y'all hoes can die slowly. I'm not laughing with y'all. I'm not key keying with y'all. And what I would have told Andy was, Andy, um, either one or two things. I would have said, Andy, I see you playing my music. Make sure y'all run me my coins because I need my money. All my royalties for that. Or don't play my music. I'm just saying. But you can't have it both ways. You can't cuss these people out, drag them with reckless abandoned, and then in the next two breaths, y'all laughing, joking, kiki, and, having, and partying together. I can't party with people who I have. Because you told us you have real venom and vitriol for Giselle, which I believe. But if where I come from and how I'm, you know, built, if I have that much venom and vitriol for you, I'm not over here partying with you. I'm not laughing with you. I'm not kiki with you. I'm not playing this game with you. I don't even want to share the same fucking airspace with you. That's just me. Um, they discussed all of the sexual stuff. At that point, I was tired. I didn't care no more. I was spent. I didn't care to hear about, you know, flapping labias all over the place. I didn't care to hear about none of the stuff they had going on. All over the place that sexual. I, I, I wanted no parts of it. I moved on. Ray Ray said that he was disappointed. And how the ladies behaved, we don't care. Ray, this is nothing new. These ladies behave awfully, including your wife. All of them behave awfully. Every year. Oh, I was disappointed in how all of the ladies behaved this year. Well, that's nothing new. They've been doing this since season one. Let that go, please. Lord. As if this year was an anomaly. A mess. Um, he says the allegations against his wife Karen are bullshit. Well, that's because you want to believe that they're bullshit. They wanted no parts of seeing the picture. They want no part. See, these people want to be removed from reality. They want to just be able to say things and spew things out and never be confronted with reality. So as long as they can have plausible deniability, because I didn't see it, so it must not, I can say it wasn't true or it wasn't me, then they're going to go with that. And they will embrace the the delusion completely they will believe the lie completely completely removed from reality but this is supposed to be reality television a mess they discuss the the men i think left at that point they discussed karen no the men did not leave they started discussing karen and juan's hug karen said juan did not sexually assault her 
but needs to keep his hands off of women inappropriately, according to Karen. Karen, I feel like you're talking out of both sides. Which one is it? Because you're running around saying that the man squeezed you so tight, your, your, your breast went into your spine. and So that's inappropriate. That's sexual assault. You can't have it both ways. You then told us that you talked to Ray about it and Ray had to talk you off the ledge and talk you out of pursuing the incident. But why would he have to talk you out of pursuing that incident or if there was nothing to see here? Putting your hands on a woman inappropriately is sexual assault. It's last time I checked, I could be wrong. Or could be deemed sexual as sexual assault. Certainly in this um, um, case, it can fall into that uh, that you know array of sexual assault. I don't know, but it seemed like she was talking out of. It seemed like she wanted she didn't want to be looked at like Giselle, like when it was convenient for a read, she was willing to say that. But to continue and push forward over and over and over, because of her disdain for Giselle, she didn't want to look like Giselle. But my, you gotta, you gotta pick a side um, on that, Karen. Right is right and wrong is wrong. It doesn't matter who does it, and that's the problem with the women on this show. It's the, the right is right and wrong is wrong, dependent on who's involved for them, and those are dangerous people. Because one minute you could be good with me and be be fighting for me if I get fighting with me if I get assaulted. The next week you might with your fickle emotions, you might be mad with me and I get assaulted again and now you're like, oh well, that's what you get. See, and those kind of people are dangerous. Those are dangerous people. They ended the reunion by playing Candace's music. Candace is dancing and laughing and kicking with these awful women. And Candace, you can't have it both ways either, boo. You can't. Robin's extra footage. They could, I could have did without this. Basically, what we learned is Robin is going to believe whatever Juan tells her. She's not looking for any. Just like earlier in the episode, Karen wasn't really looking for anything. to. Uh, and Karen and Ray, I should say collectively, weren't looking for any. Um, evidence or any facts to disprove anything that they just said. It's the same thing with Robin and Juan. Robin, Juan said this happened, Juan said that happened, Juan said that happened. So I believe him. Did you check? Well, no, he told me that. That's what I believe. The same man, now I love Juan down, but the same man who cheated on you left, right, sideways before. But and I said this to someone before, Robin is a basketball wife. Her husband was a, you know, first round draft pick in the NBA. Her husband was a starting point guard in the NBA, traveling around the country, dipping his spoon into sugar bowls from sea to shining sea, from the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters. So she's used to that. And most basketball ball wives, unfortunately, know my husband's on the road two-thirds of the year. I'm going to probably have to deal with the reality that every skank and groupie across the fruited plains wants some parts of him. And Juan was then and still is a fine-ass man. That coupled with when he was young at the time, he had money, notoriety, and fame. Yeah, he was, and so Robin probably succumbed to that, not just when he was in the NBA, probably when he was in college. So at this point, she'll believe anything he says. That's what she's been doing basically her whole life. Either that, or she's lying and she's willing to put up with it, because that's just the story of her life and what she's, at this point, she's going to go along seemingly without any verification or validation of anything. So at that point, I ain't care. Everything she said at that point, I ain't really care. I, she doesn't want the truth. She wants no parts of the truth. She doesn't want to hear about the truth. She wants to believe the lie. So we could have did without that whole thing, whatever. That was the whole re reunion. 
I'm glad it's over. And I know my energy is not where it usually is, but I just don't have no more to give me face. I'm just glad this shit is over. It's over. It's over. It's over. Let's go home. That's all I got for y'all. Until next time, thank y'all for coming. Y'all drive safe for y'all now.